Hi, I'm Samben Yaakov. This is a short presentation showing how personal amplifier circuits can be described as feedback systems. Now, the classical feedback model shown here includes the amplifier or the plant, a feedback path, and a summing point. In the summing point, we subtract from the input signal the feedback signal to generate the error signal, which is then fed to the amplifier. Now the output is sampled and the part of it, feedback, is fed back. The expression for the output to input transfer ratio for a uh, feedback system in closed loop is shown here. It is equal to the uh, gain of the amplifier divided by the 1 plus beta A, we call this the loop gain. Now it's interesting to see that when the loop gain, beta A, is much larger than 1, 1 can be neglected, A divides out, the gain will be 1 over beta. When, however, the uh, beta A is smaller than 1, in this case, beta A is smaller and it can be neglected and we end up only with the gain of the amplifier. This makes sense of course because if uh, there is no feedback, that is beta is very very small, well we just have uh, the forward part uh, between the input and the output. Now this uh, very simple uh, model um, has been used a lot, however uh, it is only suitable to describe some systems uh, around operation amplifier, for example, the non-inverting amplifier. In this case, we recognize this loop here as the summing junction, because here we subtract from V sub in, we subtract the feedback part, which is obtained by a voltage divider here, and the difference here, V sub epsilon, which is shown here, is actually fed to the amplifier. So there is a one-to-one -one relationship, and therefore uh, this model can indeed describe uh, this particular amplifier. However, some cases this doesn't work. Let's have a look, for example, at the case of the inverting amplifier. In this case, if we attempt to apply the feedback model to this amplifier, something is missing. What is missing is the fact that in this amplifier, when there is the output is, say, zero, and we consider how is the input transferred or fed to the input terminals of the amplifier, we see that there is a sort of voltage divider here uh, that uh, the input is fed and actually attenuated until when it reaches uh, the input terminals of the amplifier. In the case of the feedback model, uh, if there is no feedback, S sub f is zero, then we see that all the signal is fed to the input of the amplifier. So something is missing here. And we can correct this by adding an extra block here, which I call the G block, which will take into account this particular relationship between the input and the signal fed to the input terminals of the amplifier when there is no feedback or when S sub f is equal to zero. Now, the value for this g is very simple to get. We assume that v out is zero and then we look at the relationship between v in and V epsilon, and of course what we have here is a voltage divider, so G is nothing by this um, transfer ratio. Of course beta, on the other hand, which is the relationship between V out and the signal fed back, when V in, of course, is equal to zero, is again a voltage divider of a different value. So, in this case, we can write a general equation 
for the closed loop response, that is the output voltage times the input voltage for the general case, including G. And of course, this part here is the original expression here. And now it is multiplied by G. And again, if beta A is much larger than one, we end up with G over beta. This is G over beta. Let's talk about this first. And when beta A is much smaller than one, then of course we'll have G A open loop, which again makes sense because if there's no feedback, no signal coming here, then the uh, transfer from S sub in to S sub out is G, G times um, A open loop. Now, there is a uh, fine point here that I'd like to explain, and this is the question of the sign. Um, when we have a feedback loop and we mark here minus, we mean that the feedback is negative. That is, the, if we start with a signal here going all the way, we'll end up with a negative value, that is the phase reversal. Now, this phase re reversal can come about due to two possibilities. One is that the gain of the amplifier is negative, or, and B is positive, or that the amplifier is positive while the feedback is negative. In the, any of these cases, of course, the net feedback is negative. However, look what will happen if we have one case, which is negative beta, positive A, or positive beta, negative A, in this case, when we look at the case of beta A is much larger than one, in this case, we'll end up with G over beta, of course, but in this case, it'll be positive. On the other hand, if we do the same thing for beta A much larger than 1. Here we divide A open loop again, but we are left with a negative sign. So this will be minus G over beta. This is why I have hidden here a correction factor just to notify uh, the sign that has to be uh, taken care of, and this says that the that, uh, the expression of a closed loop when beta a is much larger than one is g over beta times the sine of a open loop. Now we can see this very clearly in the case of uh, an inverting amplifier. Notice that we enter uh, the amplifier, we feed the signal actually uh, to the minus input terminal, so a open loop is in fact negative. So in this case, um, and we have earlier looked what is the expression for G and then what is the expression for beta. And of course, the transfer function has to be a G over beta times the sine of A open loop, which is negative here. Lo and behold, we are getting the right expression. So the meaning of all this is that when beta A is much larger than one, the amplifier behaves like a ideal amplifier. So we can actually, for this range of loop gain, we can analyze the amplifier as a ideal amplifier, and the results are perfect. There's no problem with them. The question is, of course, what happened when beta A is becoming equal to one, or in fact, smaller than one? Well, this is something we'll talk about in another uh, webinar. So in conclusion, we can say that by adding the G block to the feedback uh, block diagram, uh, we can describe operational amplifier based amplifier as feedback systems, and then use all the knowledge we have about feedback system to analyze this amplifier. Uh, this, this technique is uh, applicable both to the so-called 
voltage feedback amplifiers as well as current feedback amplifiers. This we'll see in a future uh, webinar. Thank you very much for your attention.